so like Marco said, my name is Adrian. I'm working for Analog Devices, and I'm going to show you how how to build basically Android applications with uh, with GNU Radio. So the motivation for this project was to run the Scopy application on Android. So if you don't know, Scopy is a Qt-based application that uses the ADLM 2000 hardware to implement a bunch of virtual instruments. So it's basically like a, a lab in the box, uh, electronics lab in the box. It has um, an oscilloscope, it has a signal generator, a voltmeter, power supply, spectrum analyzer, network analyzer, uh, different types of instruments that you would use in, uh, in your in an labora electronics laboratory. So most importantly here is that uh, we use GNU Radio for uh, signal processing and data acquisition using GRIO and GRM2K uh, modules. So for this presentation, I used Scopy to exemplify how to build uh, Qt GNU Radio apps for, for Android. So running GNU Radio on Android is not really a new idea. It is based on previous work done by Tom Rondo in 2015 and Bastian Bluesel in 2020. So uh, this provided us with a very good starting point to a very good starting point and a build recipe for GNU Radio 3.8. So our work adds on top of that work by adding support for GNU Radio 3.10, uh, IO device support. Uh, we also added support for GRQT GUI uh, on Android, so you can use the GUI pieces bundled with GNU Radio to build your own um, applications. Also, we have um, Python support. Uh, we have Python support, so basically it allows you to write flow graphs in Python and then run them on Android. So just a disclaimer, I'm not a subject expert on Android or SDR, or much in general, but... Uh, uh, there may be some inaccuracies in the slides, especially about how Android works, but it shows my understanding of uh, how I built everything. So before we begin, I'd like to uh, say a few words about Android. So Android it is a, a Linux-based operating system designed for mobile devices. So, you know, these devices usually have a high-performance CPU. They have different connectivity options. You have cellular or Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. You have storage and a big screen on them, and they're self-contained and they run on a battery. So this can make them pretty interesting for software-defined radio applications, uh, mobile software-defined radio applications. So when doing Android development, you need to install the, the SDK, which consists of Android libraries and tools. So the tools here are stuff like Gradle, which is the build system that converts from Java to uh, eventually an APK, an, an Android application. Uh, you have an emulator, you have an ADB, which is the, the, the software used to communicate with Android uh, and debug Android devices. Additionally, if you want to compile C++ libraries into, into your application, uh, you need to install the NDK. So the NDK is the native development kit. So this is a basically a cross-compiler tool chain, which has all the necessary utilities uh, to compile libraries for, for Android. And this is what we use to compile uh, GNU Radio. So what exactly is, is an Android application? Well, an Android application is a, a piece of software that runs on the Android platform. So they can be written in Java or Kotlin and are distributed as the APK files. So APK files are just fancy zip archives that have a few key files. So uh, there's the classes.dex file, which is basically the Java executable. Um, this is where the application is implemented. DEX stands for Dalvik executable, Dalvik being the uh, Java virtual machine that is running on, on Android. There's also the uh, Android manifest.xml file, which is sort of like a descriptor file. Uh, that shows how your how the application interacts with the uh, with the Android operating system. So here you find stuff like uh, the application name, uh, permissions, uh, what activities are started when the Android operating system runs your application, and you know this kind of stuff. There's also a few other folders in there, but most importantly, uh, the libs folder is where the native libraries are stored. So. Uh, the native libraries are um, C++ libraries that um, your application may use to perform perform different tasks. So GNU Radio, LibIO, um, Qt, all, all of it is, is 
all of it is bundled in, in the, this folder. So I'll now show you a brief overview of how Qt runs on Android. So Qt apps are C++ applications that make use of the Qt framework. Um, but if Android apps are written in Java, how can Qt, uh, how can, uh, Qt run on Android because it is C++? So um, what I noticed is that Qt does a, a, a clever trick here where it actually, instead of compiling the application as an executable, it compiles it as a library and uh, puts it together in the libs folder with the other native libraries. So when you start an Android application, basically a Java loader uh, powers up, which loads your Qt application. And then at that point, the C++ space pretty much takes over. Um, there is some interaction between uh, C++, the C++ domain and the Java domain. Um, basically, sometimes the Android operating system, you may want to, create, to do something in the Android operating system. You want to create a notification or um, maybe um, the Android operating system requests killing your application or something like this. And this is where um, the Java native interface uh, come, comes in, this, uh, this interface. Um, basically creates like a, a, a it, it basically eases communication in between the C++ and, and Java space. And from a source point of view, Qt projects are basically CMake projects. So CMake generates build recipes for the application library as well as, as, well as the APK. So there are two important pieces in, uh, in, uh, Qt Android projects. First, you have the C++ sources, which will generate the application library for, uh, yeah, which will generate the application library, which will be bundled with the rest of the native libraries. Um, the same sources will generate the same application uh, uh, executable on, on PC. So you pretty much have the same source uh, that's running on both Android and uh, PC target. Second, there's the Android package source, which is an Android-specific folder for um, Qt, uh, for Qt projects. And in this folder, you basically have the native libraries. You have instructions to build the APK in build.gradle. You have resources. You have the native libraries. You have Android manifest.xml. So, um, yeah, I know. Sorry, I know that this looks a little bit complicated, but uh, Qt has boilerplate implementations for everything. So if you just want to get started with, uh, with Qt on Android, it's as easy as doing new project, compile, run, and then you can start your application on both uh, uh, PC and on the target, the same uh, C++ application. So Qt takes care of everything Qt related, but when non-Qt libraries such as GNU Radio are involved, we need to build them separately. With, uh, with the NDK and bundle, bundle them together uh, with the application. So while experimenting with, with Android, I developed this workflow uh, where basically once you install all the necessary tools and compile the dependencies, you can code your uh, application in Qt and then test, like I said, the same application on PC and on the Android target. So this makes it uh, pretty useful for, for uh, you know, debug and test purposes. So we use this workflow to get Scopy up and running on uh, on on Android. So Scopy has, similar to GNU Radio, Scopy has lots of dependencies, and their dependencies have lots of dependencies. Uh, usually on a Linux PC, all of these dependencies are handled on uh, using a package manager. But on Android, we need to compile almost each of these dependencies ourselves. So there are multiple build systems involved. You have CMake, AutoTools, QMake for building the libraries. And, but you only need, really need to do this once. So once you can compile all of the dependencies, you, you should be up and running. So some patches needed to be added to, to these dependencies because they were not really meant to run on, on Android. But, uh, in the end, we managed to compile a GNU radio using the recipe from Bastian and uh, Tom's uh, previous work. Uh, and 
besides GNU Radio, we ended up compiling GRIO, GRM2K. We compiled Python and libc decode because Scopy uses uh, Python and libc decode to do um, logic anal analysis and protocol decoding. Also, we compiled the uh, QWT and all of their dependencies. Uh, and in the end, we sort of created like a, 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 an environment which, which compiles these dependencies. And this environment was also used to compile Scopy itself. Uh, yeah, so uh, j before I show you what Scopy uh, works like on, uh, on on, on Android, I wanted to talk a little bit about GRQT GUI um, because Scopy uses a modified version of GRQT GUI to, to plot, to plot uh, things on the screen. So because screens on Android devices usually have higher pixel densities than uh, on PC, we needed to enable a feature in Qt which is called GUI scaling or Qt scaling or something like this. So basically when the application is running on a high DPI display, uh, everything is very spaced out and uh, looks kind of small. And um, the scaling mechanism uh, brings everything closer together so it looks more and more natural on, on Android, on Android screens or high DPI screens. However, we noticed that when enabling this, we get very, very bad performance, especially in the FFT plot. So after some profiling and uh, benchmarking and debugging, we found out that the problem actually originates in the QWT library uh, because it tries to scale the, the plot that's being drawn on the screen. So for each pixel, it computes positions of uh, different pixels. So when you have lots of pixels on the screen, uh, there's a lot of computation that's going on that's kind of choking the, the, the CPU. So um, the solution here was to enable OpenGL rendering in QWT and in eventually in GRQT GUI. So with this optimization, basically it removes the bottleneck. We, we use the GPU to, to plot, and this frees up a, a lot of CPU cycles for GNU Radio to actually do computations and not plot uh, stuff on the screen. So another quick word about uh, LibSB. So LibSB is used by LibIO to handle USB device support. So due to the security model of, of Android, you cannot access USB file system directly uh, on Android, but you should use the Android USB manager. So there's a, a pull request with LibSB that handles, um, that enables better Android support. That's actually the name of the pull request, better Android support, uh, which takes care of uh, this for you. Basically makes it transparent for, for the developer whether it's accessing USB from an Android platform or for another platform. So you can just write your driver once. Um, yeah, after compiling this better Android support version of, of LibUSB, uh, we can just use the regular USB driver. So in our case, this driver was actually LibIO, but uh, we simply just needed to add a small snippet um, telling LibUSB how to access the JNI, the, the Java, Java space that I previously mentioned in order to access the Android USB manager. So after adding permissions to USB in Android manifest.xml, things went pretty smoothly. So using this version of LibUSB greatly reduced uh, friction when 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 using drivers, and uh, you can pretty much use the drivers right out of, out of the box. Uh, in the end, we managed to build everything. Um, Scope is just a library for the Qt application loader. So there were a few changes that were needed in the source source code, specifically in the CMake in the CMake project to make. To make aware that we're actually building for Android, but the rest of the modifications were just interactions with the Android API, so stuff like permission handling, uh, USB handling, notifications, uh, because Scopy creates a notification when you when you send it back to when you send it to sleep, but the device is still running to tell you, hey, your device, your uh, the device that you're running might be draining your battery, <laughs> so it creates a small notification for that. So now I'll show you a demo of Scopy on Android uh, in action. Um, basically, 
this is a, a screen grab from from my Android tablet and uh, uh, Scopy requests access to to the USB interface and once you grant it the device shows up on the screen you can connect to it it takes a little while to calibrate but this calibration procedure takes a lot even on the PC so I mean that's fine uh, once the calibration is uh, is done, I can go to the single generator generate a waveform. So in this particular case, I'm generating like a two megahertz waveform. Uh, I run it, and uh, I have a loopback between the single generator and the oscilloscope, and I can just view view the waveform uh, and maybe you know do measurements with it and you know, diff different kind of stuff. So uh, again, this. The same thing in the spectrum analyzer. You can see that the spectrum analyzer is definitely one, not one frame per second, but it's kind of smooth. So this is because of the Q, QWT um, OpenGL um, optimization that that we did. So yeah, all all in all, it 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 worked out fine. You can see the demo at uh, the analog devices booth where we have Scopy up and running uh, on a tablet. And uh, yeah, we eventually um, published Scope in the Google Play Store. So we developed both uh, 32 and 64 bit of the application and published it to, to the store. So publishing to the store has, kind of has its perks uh, because Google provides automatic tests for your application and you just upload an application and then uh, they run tests on different uh, devices. I, I imagine they're virtual devices, but they run tests on different devices and you get a report what device it crashed on and and why. Uh, so this is kind of useful. And also uh, Google provides a, a crash report collecting system. So basically if you install the application and it crashes on your phone or tablet, um, Google sends an anonymized crash report which contains a stack trace to, to their servers. So uh, we can analyze it. Uh, so we can analyze the, the full stack trace which happened on your phone. And this makes it that we actually caught bugs uh, in the software because before they are actually reported by the users because the, the, the crash, uh, crash collecting system sent the stack traces beforehand. So in the end, um, the work is contained in two repositories. It's Scopy Android Dependence, uh, Scopy Android Depths, and uh, GNU Radio Android, which is a, basically a fork of Bastion's work. So this uh, repository contains some test applications and uh, some scripts to initialize the cross-compile environment, to build all the dependencies necessary for Scopy. Um, it has Docker recipes to build Docker images that set up the environment. And then there's a special folder uh, called Android Application Helper Scripts. Um, basically, what this folder does is uh, it provides tools to help you get started with Android applications. So it contains an example CMake lists file, uh, which configures uh, a CMake project for GNU Radio, LibUSB, LibIO. It has a Android CMake script file, which is basically a wrapper for the running the CMA command on and uh, for compilation on Android has Android manifest.xml uh, the Android pro the Android folder uh, which has Android configurations I previously mentioned and uh, there are also some scripts that help with copying the libraries in their correct places and uh, generation of the APK files so I previously showed you this this workflow, and after some development, we, you only really need to code your application in C++ and uh, test it. You you let Docker and the scripts take care of of the rest. So we can we can code the application once, test it on PC, and then run the scripts, and you have the Android APK um, uh, generated for you. So you probably know that GNU Radio also ships GNU Radio Companion, which is a, a nice GUI application to create and test uh, flow graphs. So you can also create GUI applications with uh, GNU Radio Companion using GRQT GUI. So the Companion also has uh, its own C++ code generator. So you can it actually has a C++ and Python code generator. So you can create your flow graph and then generate code out of that flow graph. So upon C++ code generation, a similar project like uh, previously mentioned is created, a, a, a CMake project, and uh, some sources which represent uh, the application. 
So we can then take this generated code and uh, uh, apply the Android app helper scripts uh, that we developed in order to create this Android application. So this makes it that you just create your GNU Radio flow graph in the companion and you can generate Android APKs without writing much C++ at all. So this works great, but uh, uh, the problem here is that not all uh, blocks have C++ implementations. Some of them only have Python implementations. So if you try to put in a block which has uh, only a Python implementation in the C++ code generator, you get an error. And this is, was kind of a blocking point for us, but then uh, we, we realized that we actually ship Python with Scopy because we use Python for the uh, logic analyzer and uh, protocol decoding pieces. So the question that, uh, that we got is, can we make a Python runtime that supports GNU Radio on Android? So I checked out the Python dependencies needed for Python support. So there are NumPy, there's PyBind11, and PyQt5, and their dependencies. Um, uh, and if we build those, things should, should work. Uh, and we did that. Uh, so at this point, things are a little experimental, but I think they are still worth presenting because uh, it shows how you can actually build uh, Python flow graphs in GNU Radio. So in order to build the Python packages, uh, you, I used uh, the cross env package which basically creates a special kind of virtual environment that cross compiles and uh, uh, that is used to cross compile and deploy uh, Python packages to an embedded to an, an embedded target. And once you compile Python for both the build machine and the target machine, you can use it to install packages with pip. Uh, so this works great for Python only packages, but you can also use uh, setup tools for packages that need some compilation with uh, Cypher. So the resulting virtual environment can be deployed to an embedded target, uh, which in this case is Android. And I used uh, this cross env package to, uh, build, uh, to build and install NumPy and PyQt5. PyBind11 is not technically a Python package, but rather is a, a C++ library that creates Python bindings. So the installation of this library went pretty smoothly. However, in practice, I got some weird undefined behavior, especially when using uh, uh, hierarchical blocks. And the solution was here to use a different branch of PyBind11, which is called the smart folder branch. Uh, so this branch modifies some aspect of smart pointer lifecycle in PyBind. Um, now the problem here is that this branch uses a different syntax for generation, so I use, I, uh, so I needed to port GNU Radio and all of the out of three modules that into uh, into uh, uh, that I use in in this project to to the new syntax. But eventually, <laughs> but eventually things uh, things worked out. I left because Marcus was laughing. <laughs> so eventually, I created this very crude application. which is called the GR Flow Graph Runner. So this application is like super, super simple. Uh, it has very bad error handling, so it crashes like a lot, but uh, in the end, uh, what this application does is that it loads a Python file and runs it. it it's as simple as that. So uh, ideally, that Python file would have a GNU Radio flow graph in it. Um, on Android, it also bundles the full Python runtime, so uh, you get, you get a, a full Python interpreter in, the, in this Android application. So, in the end, running a flow graph on Android is simply reduced to um, load to creating a flow graph in the companion, loading the, Python, the resulting Python file from the Python code generator into the GR flow graph runner application, and that's it. You can run it. Um, you can even go, you can even go further. You can uh, set up like a sync between your PC and uh, the, the Android tablet or the Android device, something like Google Drive or Dropbox. You work in that folder, and then you always have the latest version of your flow graph that you've been working on te and testing on PC, and you can test it on 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 the Android tablet. So it's like pretty seamless. Um, yeah, so like I said, I, I promised you that uh, I'd show you 
how to create your own FM receiver transmitter. You just create it in a GNU Radio Companion and uh, use the code generator either for Python or for, uh, you use the code generator for Python to load it into the GR Flow Graph Runner. Or alternatively, you can generate C++ code and uh, compile it to an APK using the scripts uh, I provided. So this is a small demo of the FM receiver transmitter. Here I created the, the, the flow graph for an FM receiver and I connected the Pluto to the Android tablet. Um, and then I used the walkie-talkie to talk to the Pluto and receive the, you know, what I'm talking, the you know, radio flow graph demodulates uh, the, my voice on Android and you can hear it on the speakers. So, uh, like I said, the application is kind of not that good <laughs> so you need to load you need to actually press the load button twice first to grant permissions to the usb and then to load the flow graph but once you load it uh the gui shows up and this gui is the same gui that uh, i created and it's the same it looks like on the android pc now i don't know if we have sound uh but here i say uh, hey uh, testing Yeah, uh, there I said something like, make sure you stop by our booth and check out this demo as well. <laughs> so, uh, you know, in the end, getting up and running is a little complicated, so I created Docker images to help you get started. Uh, so these Docker images are also useful for documenting the, the, the setup because you have to install a, a lot of stuff. And also, uh, the, the Docker images were super useful uh, to integrate in our continuous integration infrastructure. So once you, we commit to a, a code change to Scopy, we spin up the Docker image to generate APK files, like uh, 10 minutes, you get an APK within committing your code. So it's pretty useful for testing as well. Uh, you have links for the Docker images, you have links for the repository and um, yeah, this is this is about it. Um, we, you, we can use Qt to reliably reliably create cross-platform applications, uh, including on Android. And with this approach, you don't need to much write to write that much Java code. I mean, in some cases, not even that much C C++ code. You just use the companion. Uh, on top of previous work, we added uh, support for GNU Radio 3.10. We implemented OpenGL in GRQt GUI and uh, we added Python support. So most importantly here is that this project can, can be extended by adding more libraries and adding more uh, modules to, 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 the, to the project and to the Docker image. In the end, yeah, it was a very interesting project. I learned, about, uh, I learned a lot about Android and cross-compiling, and in some <laughs> particular cases, I learned a lot about myself. <laughs> Uh, yeah, thanks. <laughs>